Thanks very much. Uh, thanks to the organizers, uh, Sayan and Matteo, for inviting us to give this talk. Um, so uh, just uh, so it's, it's about random sorting networks and last passage percolation. But let me let me just um, tell you a few words about the the history of this project first. So um, uh, at a conference a couple of years ago, um, Dan Romick uh, told me about this uh, an open problem from. Uh, the paper where he uh, introduced the uh, oriented swap process together with uh, um, Angel and Holroyd. And, um, and then I was uh, somehow intrigued by this, pro by this problem. And uh, the next year I proposed with, um, with uh, Fabio Kunden, uh, another researcher from University College Dublin, um, an undergraduate research program. Um, and uh, an undergraduate student joined us in this in this project summer project Shane Gibbons, and then we we started collaborating on on this working on on this pro on this problem um, later on together with uh, with Dan as well. Uh, so we have uh, we have this um, this work that um, that is not <laughs> is not really well. Um, the article is finished, but <laughs> the work is not really finished in the sense that uh, there are still many things to be understood, in particular, there's, there's, a, there's a conjecture that we haven't been able to prove in full generality that I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk to you about today. Um, so I will uh, uh, introduce um, sorting networks, uh, uh, corner growth process and last passage percolation, these three um, pretty well known um, uh, stochastic processes have some uh, connections between them. Some of them are, are very um, are very well known, and some others are uh, probably deeper and uh, um, more difficult to understand, um, as I will, uh, I will I will tell you today. So uh, just okay. Uh, these are the, the three <laughs> three figures for the for the three random processes that, uh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about today. Um, and just uh, yeah, I just want to acknowledge Dan Romick for the for the figures um, on these slides, on this slide, and on the on the next slides as well. Uh, many of them are uh, his. Uh, but okay, I, I'm going to introduce the the these processes later. Just l let me just give um, the results our results in a nutshell. Um, so we have three random vectors which we denoted by u, v, and w. Um, the subscript n is associated to somehow the size of the system and uh, also the length of the vectors. Um, so u is associated to the oriented swap process, v is associated to both the corner growth process and last passage percolation, and w is associated to last passage percolation only. And, um, and we have uh, these two identities in distribution between uh, U and V and, be and between V and W. But the first one, uh, the fact that U is equal to W in distribution is still uh, conjectural in its full generality. So just, uh, just um, in summary, the, um, the interesting features about these um, identities in distribution, well, the first one, of course, is a, is a new, um, new finite end connection between these random processes. So already at finite end, we found, we found exact uh, distributional equalities. Uh, and then there's a nice consequence in terms of uh, asymptotics of these processes because, um, because these identities uh, tell us a lot about the um, asymptotic distribution of the absorbing time of the oriented swap process. And finally, um, we, uh, we have a new combinatorial identity. So one of these uh, identities, in particular the conjectural one, um, is equivalent to a combinatorial identity which is related to um, a celebrated uh, correspondence in combinatorics, which is uh, known under the name of Adelman Green uh, bijection. Um, so now let me, after telling you the results in a nutshell, uh, let me introduce these models. So um, first of all, what a, a sorting network is. Um, so sorting network of order n 
uh, can be seen in, in, uh, in, okay, in several different ways, but you can think of um, a permutation, like the identity permutation, which you have here on the left-hand side, like one, one, two, N. Okay, and then you start uh, swapping um, the particles. So I will refer to the to these labels one to n as particles. Okay, you start swapping particles. Uh, so for example, here you uh, here you swap uh, particle um, the particle in position five with the particle in position six, uh, which in in this case it's just five and six. Okay, um, and then well, and then here for example you you swap particle uh, one with particle two, and so on. But uh, the main thing, okay, that you, you have to remember is that you, you swap i with j only if, um, well, first of all, i and j are adjacent particles um, at some time and um, a i is less than j. So you, you can swap particles only if they are in increasing order, okay, not if, if they are in decreasing order. So at the end, at the end of the process, you'll get um, well. This is, so far, it's not a process; it's just that everything is deterministic. But um, at the end, uh, you will get uh, the reverse permutation. Okay, so you start with uh, the identity permutation, which has the least number of inversions, and you end up with uh, a reverse permutation, which has the greatest the, the permutation with the greatest number of inversions. Okay. Um, so this can be uh, can be seen uh, combinatorially as a reduced world decomposition of the reverse permutation. This is essentially the um, the sequence of all these numbers here at the bottom in uh, in uh, highlighted in uh, in orange. Um, so this this means just for example these three here just means that you have swapped so swapped um, particles in position three with particle in position four okay so it's just a um, it's just a, a swap an adjacent swap um right so uh, it can be seen in other in in other ways as well for example a shortest path from the identity to the reverse permutation on the permutahedron so the permutahedron is the is the graph on the right hand side so you have, uh, it's, it's essentially the, the Cayley graph of the symmetric group, uh, where you just connect two permutations um, together um, if uh, they differ uh, by just an adjacent swap, okay? And uh, okay, and this should be viewed as a directed graph. Again, you view it as a directed graph just means that you go, you go only in one direction, the direction of increasing um, inversions, increasing number of inversions. And, uh, and okay, a third way to, to see it is a, a maximal length chain uh, in the weak Bruchat order of the symmetric group. But uh, okay, all these uh, combinatorial definitions are equivalent and the only thing actually you, you need to remember from this is that you, you just swap um, particles starting from the identity permutation um, and you can do it only if uh, if they are in increasing order. Okay, any question about this? Just, just to make sure that this, uh, the word that you write in the, in the bottom only records the, the smallest particle that is being swapped, is this correct? Say again, the, the smallest particle... When there is a swap, yeah. For example, when you swap three and four, you record three. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a swap relating to the positions. So it's a um, it's a swap between posi the particle in position three and the particle in position four. Okay. Okay. So it's 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 the swap. So you normally you normally call this uh, um, tau three, which is the the swap uh, three four as a permutation. I see. Okay. Well, and the, the number of uh, swaps is fixed, right? Yeah, the number of swaps, exactly. The number of uh, swaps is, uh, is just uh, and uh, choose two, yes. So what do you mean by a shortest path again? Yeah, well, it's a, a short, shortest path means that 
uh, you don't go back. So for example, you could swap at the beginning, you could swap one and two, and then swap two, one and two again to get, to get again to the identity permutation, but that's not permitted. So it's the shortest part in, in that sense. So if you, uh, if you see, if you're on the permutahedron, you start from the identity permutation and you wanna end up uh, at the reverse permutation, but you only choose the shortest path. So a shortest path only always increases the number of, uh, of uh, inversions. So you cannot just swap two particles and then swap them back. Is that clear? Uh, sorry, but I think like the graph is directed, which means like the number of inversions in the, like in your permutation is always decreasing. Oh, oh. Right. So if you see, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true. I mean, if you if you see it as a directed graph, you can only go in in the direction of increasing increasing number of uh, of inversions. So yes, but uh, but <clears throat> if you see it as as a as a graph without any directions, then uh, you have to specify that it, that it should be a shortest path. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so let's now introduce some, some randomness. Um, so uh, th there are at least two uh, natural models, uh, random models for um, a sorting network, a random sorting network. So the first one is just referred to as a random sorting network, but it, it, it just means uh, uniform sorting network. So you, you take the set of all uh, sorting networks of order N and you pick one at random. And the second way to construct um, a stochastic uh, sorting network is, is the oriented sort process, which is, one, which is what I'm gonna talk about today, which was first studied by um, Angel Holroyd and Romick in 2009. Uh, so um, here the, the swaps are just, uh, so you, you can think that um, all pairs of adjacent uh, positions uh, here have um, uh, so, uh, um, Poisson clocks associated to them. So if if the Poisson clock, let's say of here of the last um, of the last uh, pair here uh, rings, then you swap uh, those two the, the the particles in those two positions so that you have this swap here, and then you have the um, the swap, for example, the, the Poisson clock associated to these pair uh, rings, so, you, so that you have this swap here, uh, and so on. But again, uh, if the if uh, a, a Poisson clock rings and the particles um, associated to those uh, to those two positions are not in increasing order, then the swap is suppressed. So again, this is going to be a random, uh, uh, well, a sorting network just because you always increase the number of inversions in your permutations, okay? Um, so this is, this is what I, I just said. You, you swap i and j, um, particle psi with particle j, only if i is less than j, okay? And then you get, so you, if you start from the identity permutation, you get to an absorbing state, which is the, uh, um, the reverse permutation on the right hand side. So there would be an absorbing state and an absorbing time for the process. Um, so here in, in their paper of 2009, uh, Angel, Holroyd and Romick proved many, many things about, for example, the trajectories of the, um, of the particles that you see in the figure there. Um, we are particularly interested in, here in, in finishing times, in the finishing times of the particles. So the finishing times of individual particles um, have been proven in that paper to be, to have fluctuations of order n to the one third. So KPZ type fluctuations and uh, GUE Tracy Widom uh, limiting distribution. And this is um, using a, a, connect, a connection with, uh, with TASEP, okay, with uh, the totally asymmetric simple exclusion process. Actually, uh, the oriented swap process can be seen as a, um, a multi-TASEP or, or a color TASEP on, on, a, on a finite interval. Um, but um, yeah, so or equivalently, um, um, a set of, uh, of coupled TASEPs um, but if you just consider for, for individual particles, it's just uh, enough to consider one of these TASEPs, so it's just a standard TASEP, 
to prove uh, this uh, limiting theorem, um, which goes back to essentially Johansson in this in this case because uh, it's just um, the limiting distribution of a of a current of particles in in standard TASEP or the limiting distribution of of point to point last passage percolation can be seen e either way. Um, so, so, by the, fini so by finishing time, you mean that curve on the right hand side? Um, yeah, so finishing time is just a time at which uh, a particle uh, finishes, just finishes to move. It just doesn't move okay. anymore. It cannot so move, move anymore. anymore. Yeah, so yeah, sorry, I haven't speci speci specified that, but uh, thanks for the question. So you have here all your particles from one to n, right? And uh, you know, if you have a particle, uh, particle k here, uh, this particle is is going to end up at the, at a symmetric position in the interval, so n minus k plus one. Okay, and uh, yeah, once once the particle reaches that position, well, it might move ag again after that, but uh, th there will be some time uh, when the particle gets there and doesn't move anymore. So the first time. Uh, when this happens is known as, well, we can call it finishing time of an individual particle. So we're just fixing the K and then uh, looking at this finishing time. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we can look at is the maximum of all finishing times. So the maximum of all the finishing times of the particles uh, would be the total absorbing time. So the total absorbing time using similar techniques um, was proven to be uh, of order 2n in that, uh, in that paper. Uh, and you, you can see it, for example, from here, um, because, okay, the finishing times of, of individual particles are the time at which you see, you see a straight line, right? At, at some point you say you see a straight line here. So these, these will be the, the finishing time of that particle. Um, and uh, from these simulations, which are for n equal 1,000 uh, particles, uh, you can see that uh, the absorbing time of the oriented swap process is around is around 2,000, which is just 2n. Okay, so the time at which all particles uh, have finished to move, so the so we have reached the absorbing state of the Markov process. Um, so what are the um, fluctuations and limiting law of the absorbing time? This is a, an open problem that uh, Angel Horrod and, and Romick uh, posed in 2009. And this is the, 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 the open problem that we started thinking uh, about in this, in this work. We started from, uh, from here. Uh, right, so... Um, so now I will uh, introduce uh, the second process, uh, corner growth process. Probably many of you are familiar with this, but just to fix, to fix the notation, um, what, what is this? Well, you start from, yeah, here you start from the uh, empty diagram, okay? So, and, and then you add one box at a time to form um, a new young diagram, okay? Um, so you cannot add any box. You have you had you have to add a box that forms a new Young diagram. Okay. Um, so here, um, in this particular version of the corner growth process, um, we stop the process when we reach the uh, staircase shape. So this is this is a, a staircase shape um, of the form. So it's a partition. Can be seen as a partition of. Uh, um, partition n minus one, n minus two, and so on, up to one. Okay, and um, um, yeah, so we, we just don't add boxes. We just add boxes that are um, in this, in the, in the included in this uh, staircase shape. We just ignore everything else. Okay, and you can think that um, in somehow in the same way as before. Um, you. you, you we can think um, that every site or every box in the uh, in the staircase shape, like this box, for example, um, is associated with a Poisson clock. So that box tries to uh, add itself to the current diagram uh, when the when the clock rings. Uh, but this happens again if and only if the um, uh, adding the, bo the box to the diagram forms a new Young diagram. 
okay? So for example, if I have, if the current diagram is just given by, um, let's say these four boxes here, and the, and the Poisson clock associated to, to, this, to this box here rings, well then nothing happens because I cannot add that box. The result wouldn't be uh, a young diagram again. So I first ha have to add these two boxes here before adding, before adding that, okay? Right, so this is the um, uh, classical uh, corner growth process, but again, we stop it at when we reach the staircase shape. Is it clear so that we will, sorry, what? is it clear that we will reach the staircase shape with probability one? Because we, it can be like a one big row always, isn't it? Well, you, you just, uh, you're just adding, so you, so you can think that you don't, so there are no other boxes. So you just, uh, you just add, uh, okay. You, you just add boxes included in the staircase shape. You just I ignore see. everything I else. See. So only the, the Poisson clocks are, are only associated to the box of the staircase shape. So at some point after some, I guess, sum of exponential times, yeah. you will reach the staircase shape. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, here I have represented uh, the, um, the, these two processes, the Orientis for process and corner growth process as random walks, continuous time random walks on graphs, okay? So on the left-hand side, um, you see the so-called Young lattice, um, viewed as a directed graph in the sense that, well, the, the, direction, the directions of the, um, of the arrows go from, always go from bottom to top, okay? So in this, in this, uh, in this sense. And um, yeah, so the corner growth process uh, stopping at the, um, at the staircase shape um, can be just seen as a, a continuous time random walk on these graphs. So for example, you start from the empty diagram, then you go here, here, and so on, okay? So this is a possible uh, random walk path. And uh, um, let me just notice that uh, each one of these paths is associated to a standard Young tableau of uh, shape of staircase shape. Okay, for example, in this for this particular um, for this particular uh, path, uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you have this. Uh, this standard Young tableau. So the the numbers in the in the tableau just record uh, at what like at what step I have added those boxes, right? So I have uh, first added the first box, then the second box, then this one, and this one, and so on. Okay. So every path from the empty diagram to the staircase shape uh, here is in bijection with a standard Young tableau. Um, and on the right hand side, uh, you see the permutohedron. Um, so here you start again, you can see that as, as a directed graph going from bottom to top. Um, and here, well, you can, um, you know, uh, this is for example, one, one possible um, sorting network. Sorting network is just um, a path uh, from, from bottom to top along these edges. So in this case, it would be, so the sorting network we, uh, would be maybe two, then one, then three, then two, three, and finally one, okay? Um, right, so these, uh, these numbers just record uh, uh, which positions I have swapped at each step. Okay, so for, from here to here, for example, I have swapped um, the, the particles in position two and three, uh, right? So I just write two, okay, for this swap. Right, so again, the, uh, is, um, the oriented swap process can be seen uh, as a continuous time random walk on the permutohedron. And every, every uh, random walk path is, is a path like this, which can be encoded in sorting network. Okay. Any question about this? 
Okay, so let's go on and now uh, let's define uh, two vectors, well, two of the vectors that I told you about uh, at the beginning, U and V. So they're, they're both uh, vectors of finishing times, mm, whatever that means. Now I'm going to pre precisely define those uh, for the two processes. So U is a vector of uh, length uh, n minus 1 where the kth component is just the time of the last swap between positions k and k plus one in the oriented swap process. Okay, um, so you can, you can uh, uh, quickly realize that the finishing time of particle k is given by the maximum of two adjacent uh, components of this vector. Okay, just because, just, uh, okay, as before, we have so you have all the particles here, okay, and uh, so particle k is going to end up at position n minus k plus one, okay. Um, so that uh, in order for particle k to end up in position n minus k plus one and not move any more from that time on, we need to make sure that there are no swaps between these two particles. The two, well, between those two positions in yellow, but also there are no more swaps between the two positions in, in orange, right? So we need to ensure that there are no more swaps of that position and minus k plus one with the previous one and with the next one. That's why we need the maximum between um, two, these two components of the U vector. And well, it's, it's even easier to realize that the total absorbing time of the uh, oriented swap process is given by uh, the maximum of all the components of U, right? Because if we wait for the maximum of, all the, the, of uh, the maximum component of, of U, well, we have waited for um, all the positions not to uh, perform any, any more swaps so that we have reached the absorbing state of the oriented swap process. So if everything after n k minus plus n n minus k plus one is in reverse order, then we won't have won't be having any swaps, right? Um, uh, well, you can well a particle could reach uh, the uh, like particle k could reach um, position n minus k plus one and then move again, but uh, if you, if we um, if we ensure that there are no more swaps of that position n minus k plus one with the previous one and with the next one, well, the particle in that okay. position will be, will, won't move anymore from that point on. So we have to ensure that both, uh, both times are reached. That's why you take okay. the maximum. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, so in the corner growth process, we do something, well, somehow similar. Um, so we define a vector V uh, of length n minus one, uh, where the kth component is the filling time of, of the box uh, n minus kk in the corner growth process. So let me just draw a picture here. Uh, you have something Yeah, you have a staircase shape, which is something like this. Okay, and we uh, and we are asking for the time at which a box on the anti-diagonal on the uh, this anti-diagonal line, okay, those boxes, those external boxes, uh, has been added. Okay, so all all the all the boxes on that all, all the cross boxes there uh, have the form n minus k k. So in particular, the time at which this box has been added is Vn of one, uh, the time at which these boxes are this Vn of two and so on, up to Vn of n minus one. Okay, so this vector records the time at which the boxes on the, on the external diagonal or anti-diagonal have been added. And in particular, the maximum, again, the maximum of the components of V is the total staircase filling time of the corner growth process or the absorbing time of the corner growth proce process seen as stopping at the staircase shape. Uh, 
Okay, so we can now state our conjecture. Um, so, well, first of all, there's a natural coupling between um, between the Orienti swap process and and uh, um, and one uh, one standard taser. If you fix k, so if you fix for any fixed k, for any fixed k, so for any fixed position, there is a coupling between the Orienti swap process and a standard taser that proves this this fact, the fact that the kth component of u is equal in distribution to the kth component of v. Okay, this is, this is quite, uh, quite standard to see. Um, I, I can do it, maybe I can, if someone is interested and, um, and uh, well, I, I, I can do it maybe at the end of the talk with some, 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 some picture, essentially. You just construct a t-zip out of your uh, particles in the, in the oriented swap process. You either construct a taser or construct a, a corner growth process out of that. And you see that this is true. But a much stronger result seems to hold, which is the fact that U and V are jointly equal in distribution for all N. And uh, this doesn't follow from, from this coupling with, uh, with a taser. Uh, it's a much deeper result, and we haven't been able to prove it in, in full generality. Uh, what we have done is to reformulate this probabilistic conjecture into a combinatorial uh, identity which is related to the Adam and Green bijection that I will uh, talk briefly about later on. And thanks to this, uh, we have just verified that this purely combinatorial identity is true uh, just in a computational way uh, up to n equals six. So we have a computer verification of this conjecture up to n equals six. Okay, let me now talk about the third model, which is last passage percolation, um, which is related uh, to corner growth process, of course, but uh, um, I'll need to introduce this model as well, because W, the third vector that I'm gonna talk about, is only related to last passage percolation and not, to, and not in an obvious way to the corner growth process, okay. So, um, Okay, uh, so here we have the uh, two-dimensional integer lattice um, where each site, at each site here uh, of, the, um, of the lattice, we associate uh, a random variable xij. So ij is the site in Z2 and xij is the random variable that we associate to it. Um, so that we have a field of iid exponential rate one random variables and we consider uh, the maximum over, so we fix two points, um, A, B, and C, D, these two, po oops. Uh, these two points here. And we consider a directed path, a directed path from A, B to uh, C, D. So all these colored paths that you see there are possible directed paths. So they only go in two directions in this picture, just uh, right or down. Um, and then we define the last passage time uh, from AB to CD as the maximum over all, the, all, all directed paths from AB to CD of the sum of the exponential random variables collected along those, uh, those paths, okay? So this is last passage percolation. Uh, and there, there is a well-known um, connection between uh, uh, corner growth and last passage percolation, which goes, uh, goes as follows. So you can, uh, define xij, each xij, to be the time uh, when you add the box ij uh, in the corner growth process. Um, once you have added the adjacent boxes i minus 1j and ij minus 1, right? So you have a, a, this the box, uh, um, the box ij. So in order to add this box, as I said before, you have to first add these two boxes, the, the, the box to the left and box above it. Um, and then after you have done that, uh, you wait a further exponential um, waiting time, uh, and then you add uh, box ij. Okay, so xijs are uh, turned out to be iid exponential random variables if they are defined this way. And uh, the last passage time from one one, so the top left corner uh, to ij is just the total time in terms of the corner growth process, just the total time that it takes 
for the box IJ to be added. Okay. Um, so, so in particular, um, what let's let's recall what the components of Vn uh, were. So the components, so the cave component of Vn was just the time when I add this box here uh, to the in the corner growth process, right? Um, but this in terms of last passage percolation can be seen as the last passage percolation from one one to that box. Okay, so we can reformulate uh, Vn as a vector of um, what, well, as what we called a point to line last passage percolation vector in the sense that every component of this vector is a last passage time from the top left corner to uh, some, um, you know, some uh, uh, corner uh, entry here. So some, some point on the line, on the anti-diagonal line, which is this, uh, this line of boxes here. Okay. And uh, the, the maximum of all these components, again, will be, uh, well, in terms of the corner growth process, the absorbing time of this process stopped at the staircase shape. And in terms of last passage percolation will be a point to line last passage percolation time. So the, the, the maximal time, uh, the maximal waiting time along any path, uh, starting from the top left corner and ending on a point uh, on the anti-diagonal line. Okay. Oops. Uh, right. So uh, now it's time to introduce the third vector, the vector uh, Wn. So uh, this is related to last passage percolation uh, in this sense. So let's consider again a Vn of k. So Vn of k is going to be the um, the last passage time from here to here on this, like the, on, on the red path, okay? And uh, so these last passage times actually are all, all, all these paths are uh, included in a rectangle, right? So, they're, well, they're included, of course, in the, in the staircase shape, but more in particular, they're, they're uh, included in these rectangles, okay? the uh, yellow rectangle. So instead of considering last passage times from there to there, you can, from between these two opposite vertices of this rectangle, we can consider last passage time from the two opposite, the other, um, between the other pair of opposite vertices of the same rectangle. Okay, so we can consider uh, blue paths instead of red paths. Okay, and this gives rise to the uh, components of W. So the, the, the kth component of our vector W here will be, um, will be a last passage time on the blue type paths, okay? So it's quite, so here it's, it's even obvious to realize that the kth component of V and the kth component of W are equal in distribution, okay? This is, this is obvious just because, uh, well, all the weights, uh, the waiting or the waiting times uh, in the last passage percolation are IID. So you just flip the rectangle over and you get, um, you get paths that instead of uh, starting, from, uh, starting from here and ending here, well, you, you will have paths starting from here and ending here, okay? Um, so the distribution, the marginal distributions are the same, but something, and, and this is true actually for any distribution, you can put any distributions on the weights uh, and you get this uh, obvious uh, equality in distribution. But in particular for the exponential distribution, something much stronger uh, holds, which is the fact that V and W are equal in distribution jointly as vectors, okay? And this holds for exponential random variables, also for geometric random variables, which are the discrete analog, but it doesn't hold in general, okay? For example, if you put Bernoulli random variables, uh, then it doesn't hold anymore, okay? You can, uh, there are simple counterexamples. So we proved this using, um, using the duality between two versions of the RSK correspondence, which are the, the, the RSK and the, and the Burge correspondences that I will, I will briefly talk about later. Uh, 
Okay, so let me summarize uh, what we have so far. So the, the definitions and the results that we have. So we have defined uh, U as a vector of last swap times in the oriented swap process. Um, we have defined uh, V, Vn to be um, the staircase filling time of the corner growth process. Well, uh, well, sorry, a vector, a vector of staircase filling times in the, in the corner growth process, but also equivalently as a point to line last passage percolation vector. Okay, it can be seen as in, in both ways, totally equivalent. And then we have a third vector, which is a line to line last passage percolation vector. So let me just go back one second to this slide. Well, the, the reason why I call this li last pass, uh, sorry, line to line last passage percolation is that all the, um, all the paths here start on this vertical line and end on this vertical line, uh, sorry, horizontal line here. So that's why I call, the, I call them for convenience last pass, uh, line to line. Uh, LPP times, okay. Um, right, so, so the, the results, well, uh, first of all, we have a notice that, uh, uh, well, it's either easy to see or totally obvious that the marginal distributions of those three vectors are equal, um, but the results are that, uh, well, we conjecture uh, equality in distribution between U and V and verified it for a small values of n with a computer verification up to n equals six. And then we have proved that v and, and w are equal in distribution. So this is the summary of the results. Um, before giving, a giving you a few words about the proofs, uh, I would like to outline a nice application of, this, of these identities, uh, which concerns the uh, absorbing time of the oriented swap process. Uh, so we can define, uh, again, the maximum component of, of U as U max, the maximum component of V as, as V max, okay? So U max is the absorbing time of the oriented swap process. V max is the point to line last passage percolation time. So it turns out that the, um, the, asymptot the fluctuations and asymptotic distribution of uh, the point to line last passage percolation are well known and are, have fluctuations. So the fluctuations are of order n to the one third and the asymptotic distribution is F1. So the, the Tracy Weedham uh, GOE distribution, uh, which comes from a random matrix theory. So it's been first uh, uh, derived by Tracy Weedham as the limiting law of the maximum eigenvalue of random matrices from uh, the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble when the size of the matrix gets large, okay? Um, and this, okay, this has been shown, well, in a, in, in a similar model, in a kind of Poissonized model has been shown um, by Bike and Reigns in 2001. Then we have the works uh, about TASEP um, with flat initial conditions uh, in, uh, which is equivalent to this uh, by Sasamoto and board in Perhoff, uh, Ferrari and Sasamoto. Uh, and then we have um, another proof of this using symplectic sure functions by myself and Nico Ziguras. Um, so, the, so this is a well, well studied model. Uh, unlike the Mm, absorbing time of the uh, oriented swap process. So uh, if we know that, if we know this, if we know that uh, U max and V max uh, have the same uh, distribution, then we can deduce that the same asymptotic uh, theorem, the same limiting theorem holds for uh, the absorbing time of the oriented swap process. And this has been recently, uh, uh, has been recently derived in a paper by Alexei Bufetov, Gorin, and Romik, um, where they uh, where they proved so it, it's this a uh, yeah this is actually a, um, a weaker version of our conjecture. So our conjecture is that U and V are equal in distribution. So what they what they proved is that the maximum component of U and V are equal in distribution, using um, recent work by um, again Gorin. Uh, Borodin and Wheeler uh, about uh, color position symmetry in uh, uh, totally asymmetric simple exclusion process and, uh, and uh, other more general uh, 
uh, models like vertex models. Um, so using these techniques, they could uh, they couldn't um, they couldn't uh, uh, tackle the, the the full conjecture, but we were still able to prove something uh, like this equality in distribution, which is enough to derive the asymptotic distribution of the absorbing time of the OST. Okay. So this is a nice follow-up uh, work of, of, our, um, of our work um, with uh, Gibbons, Ramik, and Kunde. So uh, any questions before I give you a few words about the proofs? Okay, so uh, what about the proofs? Um, so I told you that the second identity, the one that we actually proved uh, is V equal W, is based on the RSK and the Birch correspondences. So the way we need these two combinatorial bijections um, is, a, is a, okay, a bit unusual maybe. It's not in terms of, uh, okay, the RSK usually stated as a bijection between uh, matrices and a pair of uh, semi-standard Young tableau. So the way we need it is, is slightly more general. Um, so we need the RSK and also the Birch correspondence, which is a version, a different version of the RSK correspondence, as bijections between tableau of any shape, of any shape lambda, like the one that you see there, and another tableau of the same, of the same shape, um, okay? The same for the Birch correspondence. So here, uh, the tableau can actually be real, okay? They can, they can, uh, they can have real entries. They don't need to be integer. Okay. And um, so I'm not gonna tell you how these bijections are constructed, but the, the, the main point, so the, the, the main connection between uh, RSK and also the Birch correspondence and uh, last passage percolation is the property that you see there. So you have some input weights, which are the XIJs, which are the, the, the fillings of your uh, young tableau. And then you consider uh, the output entries on a border strip. So a border strip is the one that you see in green, are just the, those exter external boxes of your tableau. And you consider um, one of them, uh, MN, okay? Is MN is one of these external boxes. And what's the what's the um, the RSK output in that site? It's just the last passage percolation on the input weights xij. Okay, it's just a last passage percolation from here to this box here. Okay, and in the Birch case, we have exactly the opposite: uh, the the m and entry of um, the Birch out, output tableau is the uh, last passage time from the, uh, from the other two vertices of the same rectangle. So something like this from here to here. Okay, and that's the entry uh, B, M, M. So the entry M, M of the Burge output tableau. Okay, and, and then, so from here you can already see the connection with our vectors uh, of last passage times uh, v and W, okay? So here for now, they, everything is deterministic. So the, um, these are just combinatorial bijections and uh, the XIJs can be just uh, numbers, right? But now we put a distribution on, this, on these numbers. So we, we now suppose that X is a random tableau of shape lambda with a particular distribution. So not any distribution is allowed, only geometric or exponential uh, distribution. Then we have proved using the properties of these two uh, combinatorial correspondences that the output tableau of the RSK correspondence is distributed exactly as the output tableau of the Birch correspondence, okay, jointly. They are not the same, they're definitely not the same, but they have the same distribution. Uh, so, and from this, we can uh, we can see how the how the proof of uh, v equal w works. Um, so you just consider the um, so now we specify the shape to be a staircase shape. So before any shape would, would be fine. You can you can take the you know border strip of any any shape. But now we 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 consider the staircase shape, which is one the one we are we are uh, concerned with. 
so something like this again okay and uh, and we consider the the corner boxes oops what happened so the corner boxes of this of this staircase shape so in those boxes you have some RS, rsk uh, output entries and burge output entries and thanks to this lemma those are equal in distribution actually the whole tableau is equal in distribution right but we are concerned about the those corner entries so uh, bec why because those corner entries we know them to be actual actually last passage times okay and this and this follows exactly from from this property of rsk and birch correspondence of the rsk and birch correspondences so that we have the, the joint distribution of uh, vector v uh, which are these usual let's say last passage times and the vector w which is the vector of these weird point line to line last passage times uh, or dual dual last passage times as we call them in our paper are equal in distribution okay and this is about the um, the distribution identity v equal w so let's now go to the combinatorial identity and the and the other probabilistic identity so we we now want to um to consider v uh, vn vn and un so vn um is uh, now we see well it's a vector of last passage times but now it's more convenient to see it as a as a vector of um cor uh, corner growth filling times of the boxes on the anti-diagonal of the staircase shape okay so v is associated to a corner growth process and u is the vector of last swap times in the oriented swap process so what we did was to um, consider the joint density functions of these two vectors okay so the fact that uh, v and u are equal in distribution is just the fact that the joint density functions are equal okay but then each of these density function we, we can condition it to the uh, particular random walk path uh, that um, that uh, the, the random walk on the on the graph is taking okay i recall you that uh, um, the corner growth process can be seen as a random walk on the young graph and the orientis process can be seen as a random walk on the permitohedron okay so we can just condition the particular in both cases on the uh, random walk path that we are taking so that we uh, we obtain a sum over well a weighted sum uh, over of conditional densities okay and um, and the sums are over the odd the paths right the random walk paths so what are the random walk paths in the first case there will be staircase shape standard young tableau because i recall you that any path from the empty diagram to the staircase uh, diagram can be seen can be encoded uh, just by putting some numbers in the stair shape in the in the staircase shape as a young tableau and on the other side uh, we will have sorting networks okay and then what we did well uh, this conditional density we, we just uh, we just computed the fourier transforms of this of these conditional densities uh, so that the probabilistic identity uh, or, the, or the distribution identity uh, v equal u um, can be written as a purely uh, combinatorial identity in this way. Um, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something about this identity. So here you have exactly the same identity. So what are the element, the main elements of this identity? So first of all, as I said. Uh, we have on the left hand and right hand sides um, uh, sums over the random walk paths. So in this case, we have uh, sums over standard Young tableau of staircase shape. And on this case, we have sums over sorting networks. Okay, so T and S are uh, tableau and sorting networks respectively. Um, so FT and GS that appear in this equation are rational functions. So where, these, uh, where do these rational functions come from? Well, they come just from the conditional densities. So the conditional densities um, 
uh, well, uh, the, sorry, the Fourier transforms of the conditional densities. So the conditional densities will, will just be essentially a sum of exponential random variables. So we have a convolution of, of exponential densities. We take the Fourier transform, and in the end, we end up with rational functions because the, the, the Fourier transform of uh, an exponential density is just a rational function. Okay. And then uh, we have this weird thing. Uh, so, we are, um, so we are multiplying this FT and GS uh, by permutations. So what does that mean? So sigma T and, and pi S are permutations associated with a tableau T uh, in one case and with a sorting network S on the other case. Uh, so essentially this identity should be interpreted as, as an equality in the um, free vector space generated by the permutations, uh, the, yeah, the permutation of S and, and minus one. So this in, in simpler terms is just, just means that this identity is equivalent to um, a sum, let's say here we have a sum of all tableau such that the associated permutation is fixed, let's say sigma, okay, of FT. And on the right hand side, uh, we have a sum over all sorting networks such that the associated permutation, um, sorry. So the associated permutation is again the same sigma. Okay. And this holds for any permutation that you take. So you fix a permutation for all possible permutation. Uh, these two uh, quantities, uh, the blue one and the red one are equal. So this is what uh, uh, that the equation in the, in the block uh, means. Okay. So what are these permutations associated to the to the tableau and to the sorting networks? Well, essentially they encode the way in which the, for example, in the in the corner growth process, the way in which all the boxes on the anti-diagonal are added to the diagram. Okay, so the order in which these boxes are added to the diagram in the drawing process is encoded by this permutation sigma t associated with the young tableau t. And on the other side, uh, the permutation pi s associated with the sorting network s, it encodes the way in which, uh, well, the order of the last swap uh, the, the last swaps of each position in the um, in the oriented swap process. Okay, uh, right. So uh, just uh, one last thing about the Edelman Green bijection. So the Edelman Green bijection is uh, a remarkable uh, correspondence between standard Young tableau of staircase shape and sorting networks of order n. So it was already noticed by Stanley that these two sets are equinumerous. And Edelman in green around, I think 20, 30 years ago, I guess. Yes, around 30 years ago, uh, they proved that, uh, well, they, they found an explicit bijection uh, between these two sets. And what we proved is that under this bijection, uh, the two permutations, sigma t associated with uh, t and pi s associated with uh, sorting network s are the same. Okay, so they are the same if t and s are associated to each other under the Adam and Green bijection. But the bad news is that um, under the same bijection, it doesn't hold that ft is equal to gs. So this identity here, the identity, let's say, let's put in a color, um, the identity in, uh, in orange here, okay, doesn't follow uh, from the Edelman Green bijection uh, because, yeah, so the, the, the permutations essentially are, are the same, but the, the rational function FT and GS are not the same. So, yeah, so the, so the, the Edelman Green bijection doesn't seem to be enough to prove this combinatorial conjecture, which is in turn equivalent to our probabilistic conjecture. Anyway, this, this is the identity that we use to, to, uh, to verify computationally uh, our conjecture up to n equals six. Okay. So the F and G functions are very explicit? 
uh, which functions? The if, if the NGS. Yeah, 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 yeah. they are explicit. Yes, they are rational, explicit uh, rational functions. Yes. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, give you a few references for this for this talk. So the first one is uh, is our work, um, which uh, is going to appear in the proceedings of uh, former power series and algebra combinatorics 2020. Uh, so it's just an extended up, abstract, but we also have a full version of the paper, which is an archive. Uh, then we have a mathematical mathematica package on on the website, on uh, Dan Romick's website, um, which uh, verifies the, where you can uh, play with, uh, uh, you know, with a conjecture and verify it yourself up to n equals six. So after that, it, it becomes uh, computationally challenging. Uh, then we have the recent work uh, by uh, Buffettov, Gorin, and Romick uh, about the absorbing time asymptotics of the oriented so process. Uh, this is the, the original paper where the oriented swap process was introduced. And the last one is, is a paper by myself and Nico Ziguras, where we, uh, we prove the asymptotics of the point to line last passage percolation using um, symplectic show functions. Okay, so this is another slide. Okay, thanks very much. I'm done. Okay. Thank you, Elia, for the wonderful talk. So if anyone has questions, he can unmute himself and ask. So. So personally, I'm interested in uh, expanding a little on, uh, on, the, on the conjecture. For example, this, uh, yeah, yeah. Also, the the question which was uh, made before. Uh, so the, the the structure of these functions and the f, uh, t, and g s. So it's uh, uh, if yeah. you, if it's possible to give a little more details. Yeah. So so the uh, so the functions f, t, and g s. Um, essentially only only depend on so they depend on the permutation sigma and they depend uh, on the um, uh, what we call the the out degree of the um, of the of the path taken by the by the the, the random walks uh, so because the, this out degree um, the out degree is just uh, you know for example here Okay, let's let's draw just a, a random. Uh, well, not, not random. <laughs> I mean, just uh, any um, Yan diagram. Okay. Um, okay. So here, what what would be the out degree of this of this Yan diagram? Would just be if I'm not wrong, would just be three, because you can the only possible boxes that you can add to it are this one this one and this one okay so the, the out degree would be three and the out degree actually determines the rate at which uh you switch to the next young diagram right so just computing these these conditional densities are just the sums of uh, well uh, densities of uh, sums of exponential random variables where the um the rates are given by this this sequence of our degrees, and the sequence of our degrees just depend on the particular random walk path that you are taking. And the rational, so the rational functions are just uh, are just uh, uh, you know the Fourier transforms of these exponential random variables. So that's why you, that's why you have uh, rational functions. So they they they. Uh, they depend uh, this f t and g s. They depend on the on the out degrees of the random walk paths. Uh, but it's not clear. So, for example, if you just look uh, at the out degrees, they're not the same. Okay. So in the in the in the oriented swap process case and in the in the um, last pass uh, sorry and in the corn, corner growth process case, you don't have the same out degrees. You don't have that. But for some mysterious reasons, uh, if you sum them all together, 
you, you sum over all tableau associated with the particular permutation and on the left hand side and you sum over all um, sorting networks associated to the same permutation on the right hand side then you get this orange uh, equality okay it's mysterious Yeah, so you, you can see, so Dan Remick uh, is, is just, uh, has just suggested that you, you can look at uh, some examples that we have in our uh, SAC paper, um, example 3.1 and 3.2, there are explicit examples of uh, FT and GS, where you can see actually that, uh, that the two are different, even if T and S are associated to each other under the Adam and Green bijection. Uh, and you can actually work out there are more examples in, in low dimension where you, you can see that all these FT and GS are different. But then when you sum them all together, when they are associated to particular permutation, then they magic, magically become the same, the same rational function. So initially you were talking like oriented swap process can be coupled with TASEP. Can you explain more about it? Yes, yes, of course. Um, so here, okay. Get, um, so let's say that we have uh, four particles, for example. So we have a K okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, so you have, and um, so so let, let's see. Let's let's. Thing, for example, that we are we are interested in U N well any here n equal to four right and and U uh, N of two okay uh, then we can consider um, so 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 U N of two is the, is the last swap between position two and position three okay so we can uh, we can just project this this uh, sequence of labels which are the the current state of the of the sorting network. Um, into a single TASEP uh, by just saying that we put a particle where the, um, the labels are less than or equal to two and the whole otherwise. So this just uh, uh, evolves as a, as a TASEP. So if we, at all time, then we, we say that if we, if we see a particle um, that is um, less than or equal to two or a color in the, in the notation, yeah, color TASEP, if we see a color that is less than or equal to two, uh, then we put a particle, so otherwise we put a hole. So this just evolves as a, as a, um, as a normal, as a usual TASEP on a finite interval. So here, for example, well, we have uh, uh, the swap, for example, between, between uh, these two positions, these two, yeah, the, third, the second and the third position. Um, so these amounts in terms of the TASEP to have, yeah, to the, 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 the first particle from the right to jump to, jump to the left. First particle from the right to jump to the right, yes. And then, okay, for example, one and three now can swap. Okay, something like this. So we have this particle uh, jumping this particle, the second particle from the right jumping to the right, okay? And then we have, for example, particle one and particle two swapping. And this in terms of the taste, it just doesn't amount to any, uh, any change at all, okay? Three, two, one, four. This, well, you have we have exactly the same, okay? And then, well, just, let's just, uh, so four, one. Okay, and then three, uh, four, two, one. And then finally we get to the reverse permutation, which is this one here. Okay. Um, right, so what is, what is U, uh, UN of two or U4, U4 of two is just, um, uh, the, the time at which the last swap between um, position two and, posi and position three occurs, and the and this is just um, uh, is is just just happens here. 
Okay. Um, so these are exactly, um, so these are exactly, yeah, a computation, a tasered computation. So if, if we want to, if we want to know what uh, UN of two is, we can just uh, express it in terms of this taser. This taser doesn't give you the full information about the oriented swap process. For having, to have the full information about the oriented swap process, you have, you have to have a, a, a three couple tasers, one, mm -hmm. one starting with this initial condition, one starting with this initial condition, and one starting with this, okay? But if you just look at one of them here, we, we, we just look at this, uh, then the, um, you know, the, the time of the last swap between position two and three just amounts to the time that it takes for these two particles on the left-hand side here to get to the, to the far right here. So, and this is, this is why it's, uh, it can be uh, the, the finishing times of individual particles can be linked to, uh, to TASEP and, and you can derive the uh, GUE, Tracy Whedon distribution as limiting distribution for finishing times of individual particles because you, for an individual particle, uh, you, can, you can map the oriented swap process to one taser, okay, which is one of these three that I, I put there. And, um, and this is uh, just, uh, so this just goes back to the, to the work of Johansson to show that uh, this uh, uh, um, part, uh, taser particle currents, or in other words, point to point last passage percolation has the uh, GUE Tracy Wiener asymptotics. Okay, so this is, this is how the, uh, how in the two, 2009 paper, uh, Angel, Holroyd and Romick proved the um, uh, asymptotics of finishing times for individual particles. Uh, can I ask about the lemma, um, about yeah. the RSK and Burge, um, uh, this transformed tableau having the same distribution. So you said that yes, was only for. Uh, oh, yeah. You can't see so, it there anymore. Why not? Oh, no, is that one the previous page? Yeah. Um, but, so is that is it only geometric and exponential that that works for? Can or you is see it, just... it? No, I can't. We I can cannot. See it. On... I can't hear you anymore. Mm. Okay, can you hear me now? Let's see. I think I'll just leave the meeting and get in again. Uh, yeah, I think you're on mute earlier now. So can you uh, hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think, okay. I think there was a technical problem. Can you still hear my, can you still see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So your question was about the, this lemma, right? So what did you- Yeah, so is it, is it all, is it no other distributions that, no, like, is it just geometric and exponential? Um, can you say that or is it just uh, not general? Okay, this, okay this, this is a good question. Uh, I don't know. So I have, uh, uh, so we have uh, counter examples uh, where you, you can clearly say that this doesn't, doesn't hold for, for other distributions, for example, for Bernoulli distribution. But uh, okay, uh, saying that I'm sure that it doesn't hold for any other distribution, maybe not. I would guess so but uh, I'm not sure. So essentially the, uh, the proof here is based on, uh, yeah, on, a, on, a, on a property of, uh, of uh, the RSK and Burge correspondence. Uh, 
um, which which amounts to the fact that well in, yeah in some sense so it, uh, in some sense the geometric distributions uh, you know if you have like product of two geometric distributions with parameter p and q uh, right so the, the the joint density is p to the you know p to the x times p to the times q to the y so it can be written as p times q um well let's say let's say that uh, well you, you have the same actually the same this so let's say you have a p here um they're geometric with the same rate so this is p to the x plus y so this x plus y the sum of the um, of the of your weights okay um is the same in terms of the rsk and the Birch correspondence. So the, the, the RSK and Birch correspondence, so these X plus Y essentially, where X plus Y, I just, I've just written that for two, for two variables, but actually you need to write it for, the, for all, the, all the weights in your, in your tableau. So X, X plus Y, um, a property of the RSK, both the RSK and the Birch correspondence uh, states that X plus Y can be written as Mm, let's say R1 plus R2 in the RSK case and B1 plus B2 in the Birch case. So R1, R1 and R2 are different from B1 plus B2, but you can see that <laughs> they have the same expression. So it's not B1 plus 2B2 or something like that. It's exactly the same expression uh, below and above, so that's why you get the same distribution, even if the RSK and Birch tableau are different. Um, yeah, so this is essentially the reason. So if you put another distribution, well, if you have the same, somehow the same property that the joint distribution of this product of IID random variables can be written as, um, you know, in, just in terms of the sum of all the weights, then you can uh, you can uh, deduce exactly the same thing, but uh, I suspect that this holds only for uh, geometric or exponential random variables. In the case of the yeah. geometric uh, random variable, can you take a uh, inhomogeneous uh, uh, rates? You cannot take inhomogeneous rates because otherwise you will have uh, you lose the IID you you lose the IID property and um, yeah it doesn't work anymore if you take uh, inhomogeneous weights so you can compute so that, that's a, so in terms of the RSK and Birch correspondence you can compute exactly the distribution of uh, RSK of x and uh, Birch of x the output tableaus but they won't be the same just because you have uh, different uh, different uh, parameters. Mm.